Tony Cade Bambara was born in 1939 in Harlem. Her mother, Helen Cade, encouraged her children to explore their imaginations and introduced them to African-American writers at a young age. As a child, Tony often visited the local branch of the New York Public Library, where in addition to reading the works of writers such as Gwendolyn Brooks, she met and talked to Langston Hughes, who would stop by to speak with children. If you can imagine that, it must have been wonderful. Tony enrolled at Queens College, where she studied English and theater arts, and she later earned a master's degree from City College. And in the 1960s, she pursued a variety of educational and professional pursuits. Uh, she studied theater and film in New York and then also abroad. And she taught at City College and at Rutgers University. In addition, she worked as a social worker. Bambara's message about the rich potential of black urban life was drawn from her own personal experiences of growing up in Harlem during the 40s and the 50s. In an interview, Bambara described the Harlem of these times as, quote, a community where African genius was very much in evidence. In addition to various community meeting places such as the Apollo Theater, the Schomburg Library, and several black bookstores. Harlem also contained the Speaker's Corner, which was an informal institution that proved to be vital to Bambara's education as an intellectual and a political activist. This famous street corner functioned as a public forum where all sorts of people, including women from churches and political clubs, as well as Muslims, Rastafarians, trade unionists and activists from various political parties came to speak. And in this iconic photograph of Malcolm X, you can get a sense of how central this street corner was to the Harlem community that Bambara grew up in. Bambara very quickly made herself known in the publishing world as a young woman. In fact, in the early 1970s, when Toni Morrison was working as an editor at Random House and actively looking to publish black women authors, Toni strode into her office and engaged her in witty conversation. Morrison later recalled that soon after this first encounter, Toni Bambara submitted some short stories that Morrison found, quote, beautifully political without being pedestrian. Pambara's first book, The Black Woman, was published in 1970, and in her preface, she wrote, We are involved in a struggle for liberation. What typifies the current spirit is an embrace of the community and a hard-headed attempt to get basic with one another. The Black Woman contains writings by black women from diverse backgrounds, on a range of issues, and it features works from across genres, including poetry, short stories, autobiographical sketches, and essays. The volume was widely acclaimed as a first of its kind in the U.S., and it helped to open the door to several other anthologies that appeared over the next decade. Contributors to the anthologies include well-known writers that you probably have heard of, such as Nikki Giovanni and Alice Walker, but there are others who had never been published before. The volume did not aim to present any one ideological position. Instead, its authors voiced diverse and often conflicting opinions. Her second anthology, Tales and Stories for Black Votes, was published the following year. And this was the first time Tony would use the name Tony Cade Bambara. In this collection, she sought to focus on younger readers and to transmit to them the eloquent powers of African American oral tradition. This collection was named the Outstanding Book of 1972 in Juvenile Literature by the New York Times Book Review. And like The Black Woman, Tales and Stories features famous authors, including Ernest Gaines, Langston Hughes, and Alice Walker, as well as works by lesser-known writers and even students from Bambara's composition courses. 
Bambara's first published book of fiction reaped the highest critical praise when it was published. Reviewers, reviewers hailed Gorilla My Love for its rea realistic depiction of black urban life from the point of view of streetwise and sensitive young girls, whose vernacular language rang true. It is in this collection that one of her most anthologized short stories, The Lesson, appears. In interviews and essays, Bambara often expressed her preference for the short story as the form best suited to her own imaginative aims and abilities. She called herself a, quote, brazenly message writer, and she found that the short story served her didactic intentions better than longer narrative forms. I mean, she wanted to not only entertain uh, her reader, but she wants her reader to come away with a lesson or an idea or an awakening. Bambara noted, quote, The short story makes a modest appeal for attention, allowing me to slip up alongside the reader on their blind side and to grab them. Moreover, Bambara appreciated what she called the, quote, portable nature of the short story, which could be composed in bits and snatches, and therefore easily integrated with her busy personal and professional activities. In 1985, Bambara moved to Philadelphia, where she became involved with black independent cinema. Sadly, she died fairly young from cancer at the age of 56. Her death was covered by the New York Times, attesting to the high regard she was held in by literary critics and activists. What follows is a heavily edited exchange between two college professors about Bambara and her work. Um, the older man is Professor Eugene Redmond, a poet and retired English professor from Southern Illinois University. The second man is Dr. W.T. Lewis, who is a Bambara scholar. And I think you will enjoy Dr. Redmond's insight into Bambara, the person, because he knew her. And I think you'll also get a lot out of Dr. Lewis's scholarly reflections. Take a look. Today, uh, we will be speaking, we all came, to hear Thibi T. Lewis speak about his newest book, Black People Are My Business, Tony Kane Babara's Practices of Liberation. Uh, Thibi T. Lewis is a professor of English and is also the Interim Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at Washington State University, Vancouver. He is the author of Ballers of the New School, Race and Sports in America, the editor of Conversations with Tony K. Bambara, Gotta show out, um, a collection of Bambara's important interviews, and he's also the author of the book we will discuss today, Black People Are My Business, Tony K. Bambara's Practices of Liberation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, over hello, Dr. <laughs> Kaviri. <laughs> How are you doing today, Professor Redman? It's a pleasure to have you uh, join me for this conversation about this work in Tony K. Bombard. Thank you. Thank you. Just thinking about um, <clears throat> Tony K., who was known variously um, as Tony, and then um, Tony Kay, um, for example, her, her very important book from 19, 1970, the, uh, the Black Woman, had only Tony Kay. And she has a story about how she adopted, uh, took on the name Bambara. So some of us still say Tony Kay. Uh, most people now say Tony K. Bambara. And there's a certain ring, ambiance, and uh, meaning, meaning to the acronym TCB. In fact, 
it was it was Tony who introduced me to uh, Ellis Hazlip and uh, many of the the people uh, moving around in New York in the late sixties into the seventies, and it was Quincy Troop who introduced me to Tony, and Tony, along with a number of uh, other very important black women writers, including Tony Morrison, including Barbara Masakela, the sister of Hugh Masakela. Um, a, a whole platoon or brigade to use the word that a lot of people brought back from Cuba when they went there to cut cane uh, taught at Douglas College on the campus of Rutgers University in New Jersey and uh, many of those women appear in The Black Woman which Tony edited one of the most um, important books to come out of, well, the Black Art Movement, one of the most important books ever to be published. And so um, I think perhaps better than any of her contemporaries, I see Bambara's uh, liberation impulse as really privileging the process and practice of the work of the people. Uh, the people mm -hmm. educating themselves to cultivate the critical consciousness that she models in story after story, right? And, and her life as well, right? Yeah. So everything that she did was about being holistic. It was about hearing all the voices of the people, whether it was a uh, documentary move, you see that, you, you mm -hmm. know, it's mm -hmm. the people, people tell that story of the bomb mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Um, yeah. If it's the organizer's wife, uh, one of her, you know, short stories. It is the people speaking, the salt eaters. You're hearing from the community, and uh, and it's it's complex, and it's and it's uh, you know, yes. and that's what life is. Some people know, uh, you know, uh, but not enough. I'll say, you know, one of her very good, a good friend of hers, and editor Tony Morrison. You know, really, as you pointed out, really, really, um, you know, love what she did in her with her writing, yeah. and. Uh, you know, Tony is really unique because she, you know, people, you know, and I write about the fact that, you know, she's a social worker and uh, she, I mean, she did mm -hmm. social work and then mm -hmm. also, you know, is doing this art. Uh, and uh, as you say, just kind of putting people together, I, I know that she, just like her art couldn't limit itself to one thing. She doesn't limit herself to, okay, I'm just in this organization, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. moving around, yeah. dealing people uh organizational work and and so her her work in those stories like the apprentice or the organizer's wife or uh the seabirds are still alive uh, is always modeling this is what it means this is what liber this is what the work you're better than that you're bigger than that you're that fuller than that that, <laughs> that was the way tony responded to humanity the humans, the people around her. Um, and she, I told you, she would hang around in a community after she had come to the university. We brought her to a university. And I, 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 know, I knew about this happening on several occasions. Tony would She'd take off and you'd think she was gone, but she was still in the in the community for several days. You know, I witnessed this on several occasions. You know, most people came into, you know, came to the airport, you picked them up, and you know, whatever, dropped them at the hotel, you took them to do their spiel, you know, to read, to do a panel to uh, lecture, and then they were gone. But Tony, you know, you thought she was gone, and then you run into somebody and said, oh, we had a great time with Tony last night, and you'd ask, Tony who? <laughs> and they said, Tony Kane. 
or Tony K. Bambara or TCB. So what do you mean? Well, she, she's been in town for a week. You thought she had taken off. So she's, and that that was very common. And she, and interesting, interestingly enough, it was very common for her to be with the common people. You know, and, and the people were not, they were not intellectual necessarily, but organizers, great organizers, you know, literate and organized, but hadn't read all the things, hadn't read Marx, you know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so it's, I mean, and, and so that's Tony over and over sort of uh, using uh, her work to, to teach everybody, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even a work like The Lesson is very much mm. steeped in Pauli Ophrier's The uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, yeah. Uh, because, you know, she takes those kids downtown to that FAO Schwartz, uh, to which, you know, I, I even I, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm putting <laughs> in on what we could buy in there and I'm using it to say, <laughs> hey, look at how much this costs. You know, I remember yeah. having my daughters read the lesson. Yeah. Went to New York yeah. to go cruise through FAO Schwartz. I really was doing it trying to, to stop them from wanting to you know, the badger me about uh, something too expensive, but also, you know, I was like, okay, let's really talk about yeah. <laughs> excess. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but, but she uses that to show the readers, how do you come to consciousness? Cause the kids mm -hmm. are, you know, mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. honest. And they're, they're like, who this woman think she is trying to tell us, you know, uh, you know, she's looking down on us, but she's hanging here with us in this community. Yeah. And, um, and she, allows you know having conscience is about a process uh when there's no d dogma you're gonna get false believers and people yeah, want yeah. To really uh be committed to making an you know impact um uh, as an activist but yeah. it's about process and you have to come into yeah. it in your own way and so, own way. so you mentioned uh earlier this idea of being and so she really captured this sense of the process of becoming intellectually or uh, 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 a, uh, a, a, a conscious person with the yeah. kid. And we're hopeful, as I write about in this in the book, that that young, that young, the young protagonist is actually going to take the next step. But we see her in the process of yeah, becoming, yeah. right? And so Tony doesn't say, oh, it happened. We just leave thinking, well, we'll see what will happen to little, you know, little yeah. but but what we do understand is that the reader also learns, you know, about, you know, how do I come to this, to this, you know, go through this process? Yeah. Because you gotta, yeah. uh, you gotta be awakened to how what's- How do I come and what do I bring? Yeah, what do I bring? And what are the discrepancies? Like the kids are like, oh my God, we're really, like, we're really poor. And yeah. how come we're in this space, this stat? Yeah. And then, okay, what am I gonna do with the extra, the extra cab fare? Do yeah. I act just like these greedy capitalists and take all the extra money for myself and go buy candy? Yeah. Uh -huh. Or do I give it back to, you know, to the uh, woman who brought us down here, right? And so that yeah. everybody gets an equal share, right? So that's, yeah. the, that's, yeah. the, that's yeah. the moment. And so yeah. for that kid, but it's also for us to think, yeah. you know, are we gonna have a real democratic and socialist, you know, understanding of how do we share resources, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so she's, She's really, she's really just such a brilliant writer, and you know, of course, everyone knows her. Her, her number one thing is the short story. You know, that's yeah. because she. I mean, she even said, "I don't have a staying power," you know, for the novel. But you know, if you really understand literature, uh, you know, short stories like trying to write a poem, man. You know, every word must matter. That's right. <laughs>